File number two. You don't, you don't see many board builders do this, but there's no reason you can't use your fingers to help laminate. I fooled around with just laminating with my hand and just did the whole, the whole rail with my hand. We're going to show laminating a piece of scrap surfboard foam by somebody who's never done it before, and we're going to use three different methods. We're going to pour the resin in two concentric circles around the flaps, and then we're going to spread the flaps out evenly. And then we're going to try to pour it along the rails, as you've seen in many surfboard videos. And uh, when a lot of it ends up going on the floor, we're going to try to pour about a foot at a time and then daub it onto the cloth. And then we'll try the cardboard method. Lay the cardboard underneath and pour it right onto the cloth and the cardboard. Big circles. Well, so much for a circle. Okay, so go ahead and spread it out as good as you can. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, that, yeah. There you go. Yeah, very nice. It's much easier. Not too much. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> you got it. What would you say? Would, was that a little bit easier to yeah, do it, it like that? It was a lot easier to do it like okay. that. That's not going to go. You got to do it hard, okay? When a first timer does it, it doesn't turn out like what you would imagine when you look at a YouTube video with a professional doing it. It's just much, much harder. You just run into problems you can't even imagine. See how it's not sticking to the, uh, to the bottom? Because we don't have quite enough resin on there. One thing you can do th that's real easy, it's not messy, you just dip the squeegee. If you use a four or five inch squeegee, you can just dip the squeegee into the resin and then just add, add, add that little bit in places. Please get in the habit of using the following methods when laminating your first project. Use a slow setting resin. With polyester use 0.75% or less catalyst ratio. That's less than 1%. With epoxy use one with a 30 minute or longer gel time. Pour the resin in two or more concentric circles on the flats, saving at least 25% for the rails. Very quickly, squeegee the resin into the cloth on the flats. Saturate the rails using a piece of cardboard under the cloth. Lift the cloth with the cardboard and pour the resin on the lifted cloth. Squeegee the resin into the lifted cloth. Drag excess resin from the flats to the rails. Wrap the cloth around the rails using a squeegee and your hand. Okay, it's important to see how to get the resin out of the cloth enough so that the, the cloth is sticking directly onto the foam with no resin floating in between the cloth and the foam. If you can hear a zipper type sound, that's what you want. You want to be able to see the cloth like, like you, you hear that? That's the sound you want to hear when you get the the cloth and resin ratio proper. But over here, I left it too much so you can you can hear the difference. It's 
really almost no sound. It's just sliding on there. And when you when you pull your, your squeegee across, you're going to pick up resin. That, that shows you you've got way too much resin on that cloth. Your board will actually be stronger if you get that zipper sound. That's what you want. I, I want you to be able to identify when there's too much resin in the cloth and when the resin is the cloth is properly saturated. So this right here you can see how the resin's accumulating on the squeegee. It's too much resin. This is a proper amount of resin. You can hear that zipper sound. You can see the the texture of the cloth. And when I, I rub the squeegee across it, I'm not picking up any resin at all. Not unless I bear down very, very hard. Too rich proper.